This tutorial is going to talk about namespaces and why namespaces are useful and how you can use them. So let's take the example. Let's say we have a mouse. So public var mouse and well maybe it's a computer mouse. So we'll say the mouse will click. But what if we also want to have another mouse? We want this mouse to be the animal that squeaks. We can't have both of those because it'll give us this error down here saying that a conflict exists with our definitions. So a way we can avoid these naming conflicts is to use namespaces. What we'll do here is define a namespace, say private namespace computer. And you want to assign that a URL that will be unique to this namespace so that it doesn't um, conflict with another namespace. So let's name this one pb3.org slash computer. And we'll make another namespace and call it animal. And we'll make this one pb3.org slash animal. Alright, so we have our two namespaces set up. And what we're going to do is replace this public with computer, since this is the one that clicks and replace this public with animal, since this is the one that squeaks. Now you see we no longer have that naming conflict. And the way that we can trace these out um, and see what they're doing is by saying uh, computer colon colon mouse. And that'll give us the reference to the computer mouse. And I'll put trace around this. And then I'll say trace animal colon colon mouse. And this will give us the reference to the mouse animal. Just to see that this works, we'll see that it traces out click and squeak. So computer clicks and the animal squeaks. Now you can also use these for functions, not just variables. So um, this, this is what you'd use to avoid naming conflicts. Um, the next thing we'll cover is what you can use to avoid or to, uh, to set up different modes for your application. So let's set up an online mode and we'll rename this online and we'll set up an offline mode and change animal to offline. Now what we're going to do down here is create, we'll get rid of these the mouse lines. We'll create an online function, load data. And then we'll create an offline function, load data. And we can call these by saying online colon colon load data and offline colon colon load data. We'll actually have to put something in here. We'll say if you're online, um, use Twitter API. If you're offline, we can say uh, load local XML file. Now if we trace this out, you'll see that this one's calling use Twitter API, and which is traced out there. And this line is calling load XML file. It's called up here. It's traced out down there. Now the cool thing about this is you can actually create an object that'll store this mode for you. So we create this object as a namespace. We'll say private var mode and say it's a namespace and we'll set it its default to online. So we can replace this online namespace with mode. Get rid of this line. And you'll see if we trace this out now, you'll see we're using the Twitter API. And then later on we can change the mode to the other namespace. Say mode is now equal to offline. And then use mode, use the exact same typing. So mode load data again, but now since mode is offline, we'll go trace this out 
it'll say use Twitter API, and then, whoops, use Twitter API, and then load local XML file. And that's happening by switching the mode from online to offline. And you can toggle that on and on, on and off as much as you'd like. Um, move those back. The last thing we're going to show is how to use these namespaces within an application or within a framework. So let's get rid of our public or our private namespaces that are just members of our class. And we'll create those two namespaces um, as classes within our project. So we'll name this one online and we'll put this in the package uh, org pb3d dot lessons uh, namespaces core. And usually classes start with a capital letter but uh, if, if it's just going to be used for a namespace is the kind of best practices is to start it with a, a lowercase letter. Um, we'll delete all of this stuff within our package and we'll just name this public namespace online. And we'll set that equal to httpd pv3.org slash online. And then we'll create another class for offline mode. And we'll keep it in the same package do the same thing. So public namespace offline pv3.org slash offline. All right, so now we have our two namespaces set up ready to use. Um, now if you want to use these in your document class, you just import them just like you would do with any other uh, class you want to use. So import org uh, pb3d lessons namespaces core offline copy that line and then also import online. And You'll see that those errors went away and we can use this the exact same way we used before. So use uh, online and offline um, using the same way of switching the mode just like we did before. Now, if you're going to use these namespaces in something like a, a framework or a, a larger application, um, I'll show you how to use these in a, in a custom class. So we'll go to this namespaces folder and make a new class. And we'll name this class uh, namespace object or just namespace demo. And we'll put this in a package called classes. And then we'll import the namespaces just like we did before. So org pb3d lessons namespaces core offline and online. And then we can create those functions based on these namespaces. So let's make our load data function in here. So offline load data, uh, offline function load data, sorry. Let's say trace uh, load. Now oh, we did X or local XML file, and then we'll create an online version of that same function. Load data trace uh, use Twitter API, and you'll see if we create an instance um, of this class. Let's get rid of this functionality from our document class and then get rid of these method calls. All right, so if we create an instance of this class, we'll say my object is a new namespace demo. You'll see that if we try and access those methods that we, we can't do it without using those namespaces first. So what you would do is um, you would import the namespaces. Looks like I lost my import. So org pb3d lessons namespaces core offline. And then I could say my object dot offline load data. And then you, if you trace this out, you'll see 
we'll get the same result, load local XML file. And this time it's coming from this, uh, this namespace demo object. Now we can still use this mode variable that we used before. So we can switch offline with mode, and you'll see that mode is going to default to online. And then we'll go mode, and we'll switch it to offline, and my object dot mode is load data, so the exact same exact same keystrokes to, to make this call. And we'll see what happens here. And you get the same result by using that uh, mode namespace. Now if you want to do something called opening the namespace for use, then what you can do is say up here, just say use namespace online. Now what this will do, it'll open the online namespace and all the functions that are available through the online namespace. So you do my object dot and you'll see we'll have load data already available for us. And now this load data is automatically going to use the online namespace. Um, the kind of downside if you do it this way, you cannot switch to a different namespace within this scope. So in this class, if I say use namespace online here, I cannot switch to offline within the class. Um, if I want to change the scope, though, and I say we'll make uh, two functions. We'll call this uh, function one and private function function two. And within here, since this is the scope of this function, we can say use namespace online and go my object, uh, create, we'll copy this and use that same, same exact syntax. We'll say use namespace offline and just copy and paste this here. And then we'll call function one, then we'll call function two. And you'll see it should go online, since we're using online namespace, and then it'll go offline, since we're using offline namespace. All right. But you'll see if I bring that up out of, uh, into the class scope, if I say use namespace online up here, that this offline um, isn't going to be available. Ambiguous reference to load data. So we'll get rid of offline and then both of these calls will go to the online namespace. All right, that's the overview of namespaces. Um, you'll probably see, if you work with Flex a lot, you'll see the namespace MX internal. And if you say use MX under, underscore internal, um, it'll open up some of the internals of Flex to you. Um, and I'm, prob I'm pretty sure you'll see namespaces used throughout some other uh, ap application frameworks and whatnot. So. There you go, that's namespaces in a nutshell.